Hello and welcome to Morning Coffee Guest. I'm your host, Simone Absalom Gale. Today on our program, we talk to writer, philanthropist, entrepreneur, and communicator, Mrs. Jean Laurie Chin. Stay with us. Communicator, philanthropist, entrepreneur are some of the hats she wears. First editor of the Flair magazine, author of Soul Dance, a collection of poems and essays, CEO of, of a leading advertising and communications company, and recipient of the Order of Distinction Commander Class for Excellence in Communication, Entrepreneurship, Volunteerism, and Philanthropy. She is Mrs. Jean Laurie Chin. Mrs. Laurie Chin, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Simone. It's a pleasure. You wear so many hats in this or Jamaican society. What's your favorite of them all? I have to say my favorite right now is CCRP, the Caribbean Community of Retired Persons. I started that project for the 30th anniversary of my company, Procom, as a legacy project. And little did I know how it would have grown. So that was uh, nearly 12 years ago, and we now have over 11,000 members. Uh, that's, you're jumping the gun. <laughs> yes. I want to start from your early beginnings. Not a lot of people would know. You're not a Kingstonian. Not Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Well, I was born in a little uh, district called Hartford in Westmoreland. And all four of us were delivered at home. And uh, there is actually a poem in my book about the night I was delivered because my mother said um, it was near Christmas, it was the 5th of December, and she said a John Connor came in the yard, and all of a sudden she felt like this baby was dancing, and out I came. John Connor baby. And that's why I think I love to dance. It's a good thing that you brought up your book. Let, tell us about your work as a writer. Well, I've been writing from I was very young. Um, one of my first poems is in the book that I wrote for uh, my school magazine. And um, I must say, thank God for librarians. Uh, in Sablamar, my mom, newly widowed, would just send us to the library to read. And there was one librarian, Miss Otty, who made books so exciting for us. And then when, she, um, when my mom remarried and we moved to Kingston, our stepfather nurtured that in us as well and took us to Tom Redcomb Library every Saturday to borrow new books. And so that's where my love of writing came from. And then, of course, at Alpha, we had wonderful literature teachers. Wow. Tell us about how did you get into writing professionally? You were... You started the Flair magazine. You're yes. a columnist now. Yes. So when did that aspect of your career start? Well, when I left university, 1973, a brand new newspaper came up. It was the Jamaica Daily News. And I wanted to be a journalist. It is still a passion of mine. So I went to the Daily News, um, just finished my final exams, and asked to see the editor. Just like that, you know, didn't, no appointment, no, nobody called me and said, I got your resume. And they said, the editor is very busy. He can't see anybody today. I said, I'll wait. And his secretary, I just sat outside, and the secretary kept passing me until she just got totally fed up. And she said, OK, Mr. Prout says you have one minute. That's all you have. So he calls me in, and he says, young lady, one minute. I'm very busy. And I said, sir. I just love to write. I will work morning and night. I promise you I'd never let you down. Please give me a job. And then he said, one moment. He sent for the features editor, who asked me a few more questions, sent me outside, called me back in, and said, you're hired. Start tomorrow. And I said, what? But I have nothing to wear. 
after all of that, that's your thought? That's yes. your first thought? And I said, listen, look at us. Come as you are. And that's how it all started. And so I was working with legends, Carl Wint, mm -hmm. Tony Becker, the cartoonist, um, Livingston McLaren, Neville Garrick, Kenny James. James. Oh. All of them. We were all colleagues together. George Gray, my featured editor, Sandy McIntosh, a great team, Michael Record, who is still doing reviews. And I mean the rigor of those days, because remember, it was not electronic. So you stay up until midnight, and if you get a page to sign off, and any error comes on that page... All over again. Oh my gosh, you have hell to pay the next day. <laughs> of course, that really, I would think, helped you in terms of how you managed Procom. So you went from writing for a newspaper to helping everybody else. Well, to write. I went from writing for this newspaper until um, my fiance, we were planning to get married, and we got married a year after I started Daily News, and the hours were terrible. And he said, you know what, you're going to have to find a less hectic job. So I got a job to teach English and literature and drama at Calabar High. So there was I teaching. No, I got the job in June, went away with my husband. And when I came back, I heard that Wycliffe Bennett had been calling me about 20 times, and I needed to call him urgently. So he comes on the phone. I had known him because I was also a theatre re reviewer for Daily News. And he said, my dear, the Prime Minister has commissioned me to do this tribute to Nyerere. President Nyerere was coming to Jamaica. And I've read your last article. And you and only you can write my press releases. So I said, but Mr. Bennett, I have a job. I'm at Calabar. I'll send a car for you every afternoon. Wow. You know, with Bennett. Yes. So the car came for me. And we, I mean, it was great again to sit down with these legends to plan this fantastic gala for President Julius Nyerere. They called it the Mwalimu, which meant teacher. So, you know, everybody venerated this man. Practice, practice, practice. And the day of the event, it poured. And we drafted a release to say inclement weather, and his communications people sent back and said, no, no, no. The president says, rain is a blessing. You can say rainy weather. You cannot say inclement, because inclement means unmerciful. Yes. And so that ended. But then Carifesta was the following year. So then I resigned from Calabar and got into Carifesta, started in 75. The show was in 76. And again, Wycliffe Bennett, the hardest ta taskmaster, Merrick Needham in charge of protocol. I learned so much about protocol. We did not know night or day, and we pulled off what they say still is known as the grandest Carifesta, Carifesta 76. So then after that, after Carifesta was over, I applied for a job at Dunlop Corbin Advertising as their PR manager. Mm -hmm. Worked there for two years. And then this friend of mine, God rest her soul, said, you know, Jean, um, you're freelancing at Pegasus now. Carol Gauntley had invited me to do some freelance work. But we need somebody in-house. Why don't you negotiate? I set up a meeting with the manager. Negotiated with the manager at 26 years old and signed a contract to get a unit on the first floor of the Pegasus in exchange for providing services for them. And that's how Procom was born. So that contract was signed in 19, November 1978, and we opened our office January 1979. So my gosh, we are 44, 43 years That's this a year. long time. Congratulations, though. Thank you. So you've been writing, you've been teaching. I know Procom has handled a, a wide variety. Of accounts. It's been yes, wonderful. One yes, one of the biggest communications firm out of this island. How then did you go from that to soul dance. How did soul dance come into well, play? I know I, you've been writing all your life, yes. but the collection. Well, some of them are columns from the Observer. Okay. Some of the essays are columns I wrote. I used to be a columnist for the Greeno, and I wrote something that was controversial, mm -hmm. and I actually got threats. And I stopped because my children were young, and I said I did not want to jeopardize my family. And then afterwards, I was invited by Paget de Freitas, who was the editor at the time, to start writing a column for The Observer, which I started in 2001. 
So that's 21 years ago. And um, ever since I write for a Monday. And you know, Jamaica is such a part of me. I, I passionately love my country and my column is feeling the pulse of my country. But trying to still build hope, keeping the faith, I still think this is a great country. I know we have challenges, but I know we have the wherewithal to mm -hmm. overcome them. So I do try, I do try to celebrate who should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. I do criticize who should be criticized, but this is why I stick with the writing. It's a big sacrifice. My husband calls it my weekly labor, <laughs> my, <laughs> my weekly labor pain. But, but he's involved too. You said in the book that he's also an editor for all your works. He reads my, you know, he's a crossword champion of the family. Okay. So his spelling and his vocabulary is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So before I send off any column, he reads it. And he would say, oh my gosh, you missed a word there. Or that doesn't fit there. Or sometimes he says, that's a little too strong, you know, Gene. Tone it down. What's your process when writing? I mean, I, I, you're a mom. You've been writing all this time. Yes. You are CEO of several companies that we'll, we'll yes. get to eventually. Procom yes. is not her only uh, baby, so to speak. <laughs> and you've been writing these poems and writing columns and at one point running a section of a newspaper. What's the process when writing? Where do you get the time? Right. Well, you see, when you're a writer, and every writer will tell you this, every journalist, that ink, they say that ink gets into your blood. You cannot get away from it. It haunts you. Even the weeks where I say to my editor, I cannot give you a column this week, I feel a bit guilty because there's so much going on that I want, I want to talk about. So you really are driven to write. You're, it's, a, it's a vocation. Mm -hmm. And I just want to do a big shout out to our journalists because let me tell you, Jamaica has been in the top 10 of the free press in the world, steadily ahead of a lot of developed countries. And why is it? We have fine, fine journalists. We have fine media people like those right here in PBCJ who are dedicated, who are dedicated to the truth and who will probe and who will ask the hard questions. And so, you know, it is a vocation. And once you're in it, you really can't get away from it, as I'm sure That's you true. can attest. Yes, you, 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 you want to share your piece. You want to also ensure that the voice of the people are heard, the voices yes. of the people. Yes, indeed. All right, we've come to the end of segment one, but please stay with us. Mrs. Lori Chin is a visionary behind several national upliftment programs, such as Peace, Love, and Unity campaign for the Electoral Office of Jamaica, featuring Tony Rebel, the Lasco Teacher, Police, and Nurse of the Year Awards, and the Grace Kennedy Household Worker of the Year Award. We'll take a short break and come right back with much more. Welcome back to Morning Coffee Guest. I am Simone Absalom Gale. Now, in 2018, Mrs. Jean Laurie Chin was conferred with the Order of Distinction Commander Class for excellent service in communications, entrepreneurship, volunteerism, and philanthropy. She is still with us in studio. Mrs. Laurie Chin, what did that honor mean to you? Oh, gosh, Simone. When I got that call, my heart leapt. I mean... I love this country so much. And for my country to turn around and give me this honor, I was humbled, I was moved. It was one of the most wonderful days of my life. What had happened? What went, what went through your mind on the day of the award? That long walk that goes all the way up there, I really want you to describe it for us. It was doubly humbling because of all the wonderful people that were around me, who were also being honored, and who I had admired, and who, who were a part of my life as well. Mm -hmm. So I looked around and I said, 
you know, it just made me feel so good to be Jamaican because these were all great Jamaican people who had worked hard, who believed in sacrifice, who believed in love of country no matter what, and putting their country ahead of everything else. And so there was this warm feeling of collegiality, of sisterliness and brotherliness among us as we just sat together and and just, you know, you heard the, the um, military band playing and then walking up. And of course, you're saying, dear God, don't let me slip. <laughs> don't let me trip. Mm -hmm. You know, because I want to make everybody proud. And finally facing the governor general and him putting this medal around my neck and giving me this beautiful scroll in this case and I'm walking down and my family is there and feeling so proud. I think it, it is one of those days that I will never forget and I just am so grateful, grateful to, to my country, to the government and to my God because it's a true blessing. It is, it is. And it was a long time in coming. You have been someone who has given great service to our country. I'm a recipient of uh, the service you give to us. I mean, my parents are a part of CCRP and I receive all the emails that your group constantly gives, especially in this pandemic. Yes. So you're doing PROCOM, CCRP, and your development company that you formed with your husband. How do you find time to do all of these things? Well, and then you, you did a book. It's a support, it's a support. It's my family support and my team support. Uh, I have the most amazing team at PROCOM because for the first, um, I would say the first five years of CCRP, everybody was a volunteer. And then when they introduced the health insurance in 2019, a little longer than five years then, that is when the membership exploded and then we were able to pay back and to hire additional staff, etc. So when you see how dedicated our team is, how gentle they are with the seniors who come in, how patient they are, it's a team. You can't do anything like this without others supporting you. An amazing board of directors. The encouragement we got from our patron, Sir, Ke Sir Patrick Allen, our honorary director, Sir, Sir Kenneth Hall, the former governor general, our honorary chair, um, Professor Denise Edemeyer Shero, who is the authority on the elderly, Mrs. Velma McDonald, Dr. Owen James, all of these legends that are on board with us. That's how it's done. You cannot do it without that kind of support. And they are my sounding board. You know you must humble yourself, no matter how brilliant you, you think your idea is, you humble yourself, you share your idea, you discuss it, and you will be surprised that out of that idea comes something much bigger, something much more useful for more people. So that's why we must always never think we are the final arbiter on anything. Whenever you have that confluence of um, thought and focus, you get so much more out of what you set out to do. And the same thing with my family. Um, my two children are now managers in our businesses, and my husband is a board director. <clears throat> and um, they, they, we all just work as a team. We work as one. But I understand that that's been a tradition in your family. In reading the book, uh, Soul Dance Poems and Writings by Mrs. Laurie Chin, you would see, you know, in my imagination while I'm reading, that you have, you always helped your family, your, you would help your mother when she's doing her work, you'd help your father until his dying day, you know, to do their job. So it, it's always been a close-knit, family-oriented experience yes. with you. And so I learned at their knees. And so my dad, who was a chartered accountant, brilliant, um, got this um, condition called ankylosing spondylitis that had him in a wheelchair when he was 40. And so work from home, was part of our life. He had set up a lovely office downtown in the business district, and then he was 
he had to work from home. And so we became his little secretaries from we were in our teens. We had to type his letters on this big, um, wide carriage typewriter, five copies, and then you have the little rubber thing that you're there rubbing and cleaning up, and he was such a perfectionist, he'd say, you rub that, type it over. Let, don't tell them everything. I want them to really, could you hold the book up? Yes. Uh, so I want them to actually uh, get the book. There's a lot of things you can learn from this book. I especially liked the poems that are in this book. My favorite, Time. Pick up uh, Time. Yes. Could you please read that one for our audience so they can get a taste of what to expect? While is, she's finding uh, the poems, um, I would like to share that you were one of the Jamaicans who was picked to be a part of an uh, honorary collection of poems for... The Miss uh, Lou yes, Centenary Lou. publication. Yes. It's, um, that must have been a big honor because, of course, yes, she's the mother uh, of poets in Jamaica, the, the, one, uh, our yes. cultural icon. And it's you're a, picked to honor her and her works. And we have to say congrats to Dr. Opal Palmer, Adisa Palmer. Yes. Because uh, she pulled all of us together. So it's 100 plus voices yes. for Miss Lou. But in that book, you will learn all about Miss Lou. You'll also have her poems. So to have your poem. Along in, with such an icon. Louise, honorable Louise Bennett Kovalis poems. Such an honor. And of course, this is also known in textbooks throughout uh, Jamaica. Pick up time. Yes, it's in textbooks. And like what one, of, one of my friends says, guess what? My little boy came home and he has to study pick up time. All right. <laughs> so let's hear, without further ado, pick up time. Look to the camera. That's your camera right there. Pick yes. up time by Mrs. Jean Laurie Chin. So this is all about balancing motherhood and business. The day is looking positive, our profits set to climb. But already I am counting the hours to pick up time. I know you're very important, this gourmet lunch divine. In spite of that, I'm counting the minutes to pick up time. I'm really glad you called to say the contract is now mine. But I must confess, I'm dashing. It's seconds to pick up time. My children rush to get front seat. Their laughter is sublime. Freeze the moment. Stop the clock. I live for pick up time. Such a special, special poem. For my children. You're a successful businesswoman. You're a teacher, you're a scholar, and you're a writer. But in that one poem, we get to share a moment that you think is precious. All it's of not us the money. parents. All of us parents. It's not the fame. It's not the honor. It's just that moment that you have with your children. It's because family. family. Family first. And let us remember that no matter what else is going on in your life, you focus on your family. You love your family. You make them know how precious they are. You stick with them. You must make sure that they can trust you in all things, family first. So, as a media, I, I don't want to say stalwart, but as someone who has guided a lot of media entities and a lot of persons who are in need of such services, persons that can help you to communicate and ensure your business is in tune with society, your advice to young communication practitioners coming up in the business? I can tell you, the ones I see out there, they're brilliant, they're daring. I hear them every day on the media. I mean, sometimes you hear them on the radio and then when you see them on TV or on YouTube, they're like, but these are youngsters and they're doing so well. And I think, you know, it is because of stalwarts, people like Cliff Hughes, people like Milton Walker, people like Garfield Grandison, who have really taken them through and given them that confidence. And I would say to them, because I'm a Garveyite to the bone, confidence, right, is so important. Of course, he also says you need to work. 
You need to work very hard for what you want. He says, never you stand in a line without a book. Marcus Garvey said that. Don't waste your time. Always be learning. But then he says, dignity. He even says, be careful of how you, you dress, how you present yourself. Because that's the first thing people will see, and they'll judge you that way. Uh, so he says, keep your dignity. You know, I think if we had more Garvey in our curriculum, this country would be so different. It would. It, it would, would be so different. And so I say to young journalists, I say, remember to work hard. Remember to keep your dignity in all things and be as professional as possible, which means be prepared. Don't you ever think you are so bright that you can go into an assignment and not prepare yourself. That is when you will fail. So always go that extra mile and prepare for whatever it is that you're going into. All right, for those of us who would like a copy of your book, uh, where can we get a copy of it? Well, I'm sorry to say, this publication is now in its last box, <laughs> but it is on Kindle. So if you're on Kindle, you can actually download it from Amazon. Okay. On Kindle, yes. And if someone wants to join the community, CCRP, how do they get in contact? Right, the they go to our website, ccrponline.org, or they come to our head office at 2 Phoenix Avenue. And if you go online at our website, you will see the addresses for Northeast Jamaica, Western Jamaica, and Central Jamaica. So we have members all over Jamaica. And, you know, we are grateful to Sajikor and Gallagher for, on, for providing and underwriting our health plan, and also to JNGI for now giving us great insurance discounted plans, and to over 70 discount partners. So when you have that card, you can really save a lot. And for pensioners, it really helps them. All right, to take us out today, I'm going to ask Mrs. Laurie Chin to read one of her favorite poems for us. So this poem is in the voice of a grandmother. It's called More Time. How to live life? I think we have a choice. You can just sit down and turn a TikTok on God big old clock, or take some heat like a tip of time in God big soup pot. Dark little time jump and bubble in the Saturday soup. Ah, me can smell it now. Before me share, me take it out. But the flavor nice up my mouth. So see me here, one beany piece of time. God willing, when him take me out, me will still sweet up your mind. More time.